Babe. Yeah? I need bigger. Bigger? Yeah, bigger. Wait, I thought mine was big enough. I've been telling you for years, I want bigger. Hold on, what are we talking about here? The bed. I want a bigger bed. Oh, thank God. I thought you were talking about something else. Yes, yes, definitely. I can build you a bigger bed. Bigger. If she wants bigger, I'm gonna give it to her bigger, starting with this 12 foot hunk of hardwood that is this 300 pound oak live edge slab. And it's so big, I need Jeff to help me get it up. Now there was a little extra material that I need to snip off, but don't worry, the slab won't fill a thing. All right, real quick, let's back up and I'll show you where I got this. What is this, Oak? Yeah, well, yeah, it's all, that's good headboard material. Right? It really, really is. You guys know that I love vintage reclaimed lumber here in Oklahoma City where I got this gorgeous slab and they have a ton of beautiful lumber. So if you're ever in the area or anywhere in a 5,000 mile radius, make sure to check them out and tell them Johnny sent you and they'll hook you up. Katie has asked me for a king size bed since I met her and she found out that I build furniture for a living. A queen size bed is more than enough for two people, but when you have three dogs sleeping between you and your wife, a queen just doesn't quite cut it. I thought this was gonna be white oak. It's red. I don't know, red oak is still pretty, but man, it's got nothing on white oak. Right now, we're gonna get this on the CNC and uh, I'm gonna show you this monster CNC bit that I've got that is just gonna plow through this. This is the biggest slab I've ever had on this CNC. I cut it down to nine foot, 10 inches. The cutting capacity on my CNC is right at 10 foot. This thing, it is a two and a half inch flattening bit with these carbide teeth. This thing will mow through some slabs. I could take, if I wanted to, it's not very smart to do this, but I could take a half inch pass off of this. There's no other flattening bit I've ever used that is near as good as this thing. I bought this with my own money. Then I had some conversations with the owner of RIP Precision Tools and uh, we decided to start working together. And I'm really excited because this is one of the most exciting tools in my shop, especially running my CNC. It's crazy how efficient this thing is and how strangely quiet it is. I can talk about it all day. It's gonna show you how it works. Okay, that was two passes, and that did about 80% of the flattening that we need on this side. But the finish, just look how good that is. That slab slayer from RIP Precision Tools, that thing is awesome. It'll be the last slab flattening bit you ever buy. All right, we gotta flip this thing over, do the other side. Now we're off to the lumber yard to pick up the rest of the wood we need for this bed. Like a bridge over trouble. One of the good things about that slab being red oak is that uh, we bought red oak, which is about a third of the price of white oak. So instead of paying a thousand dollars for all the lumber that I need, I'm about to pay 360. So I can live with that. Appalachian red oak. Ooh, we getting fancy. Sorry folks, I went down a Simon and Garfunkel rabbit hole the other day and I can't get bridge over troubled water out of my freaking head. Not only can I not get it out of my head, I can't stop singing it, I guess in what can only be described as the voice of a Muppet character. So uh, that's what you're getting. We just got back from uh, my local hardwood supplier. Got all this lumber here. This is everything we need to build the bed. I had them go ahead and surface it on both sides and straight line rip it on both sides, which is pretty awesome because they have a machine where they just send it through and it rips both sides parallel at the same time. I am going to use these ridiculously awesome Rockler clamps that I got. You guys have seen me use the bigger version. Like a Step one of a glue up, apply glue. Step two of a glue up, you're gonna wanna glue it up. That's it, that's all there is to it. Like a bridge. 
So we just went back to the house and measured the king size mattress we're actually gonna use for this bed. And I'm really glad that we did because I realized I need to make the runners What's it called, runners? The rails, the side thingies of the bed. I realized I needed to make the side thingies a little bit longer than what I was planning because, you know, a king size bed is 76 wide, 80 long. The mattress itself is a little over 80 long and I need to account for some extra width just so it fits in nice. And real quick, let's talk about the design. We've been using this queen platform bed that was actually one of my first YouTube videos, but don't go watch it. It's a terrible video. I had no clue what I was doing back then. But we've been using that bed since I built it almost five years ago, and somehow my shins remain intact, even though I was told the edge of the bed would essentially cut my legs off every time I got near it. But I did decide to go with a more traditional bed frame with rails connecting to the headboard and footboard using this hardware that I got from Rockler. Katie has always wanted a king size bed with a live edge slab headboard, but beyond that, she really didn't give me any guidance on what she wanted. So I have free reign here to do whatever I want. I'm gluing up two pieces of this eight quarter red oak that's been surfaced down to an inch and three quarters. And then this is where I'm gonna get my leg stock from. So the two ends at the footboard are gonna be made from this. I'm pretty sure if I was to lift this thing up, this whole piece is gonna pop off. You can see how cracked it is. I'm about to put in some C-channel, which it needs to keep it flat, but also I'm hoping that C-channel helps to hold these two pieces together. This slab is very unstable. There are a ton of cracks and you can see they're big cracks. They're really deep. What I don't wanna do is just pour a ton of epoxy inside this slab. If I was gonna make a table, that's exactly what I would do. It's already gonna be really heavy. I don't wanna fill it full of epoxy and I actually really like the aesthetic of the cracks. And what I'm gonna do right now is I've got the half inch bit on the CNC. I'm gonna come through and cut in what I'm calling stitches. I'm gonna carve in 10 of those and then I've got a piece of red oak. I can cut that up and then drop those stitches on the, like I said, this is the back of the slab. And I really think that's gonna prevent any issues with this thing breaking in half. Maybe this is overkill, but I think the wife will appreciate the headboard not breaking apart and waking us up in the middle of the night. And you know, I really need my beauty sleep. Since we're making a bed, got me thinking. What is the best bedroom song? The best song out there for those business times. I guess Business Time by uh, Flight of the Concords. Flight of the Concords. That's a that's a great one. Yeah, the time. You make me feel somebody rocking, knocking the boots. Genuine pony. I got it, dude. Simon and Garfunkel, The Sounds of Silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. If you can't perform. <laughs> If you're unable to perform. I think my favorite bedroom song, the most accurate is probably All By Myself. <laughs> you know what isn't a great bedroom song? Absolutely anything by Bruce Springsteen. I'm about to carve the footboard. I'm actually really excited about this carve. A little bit nervous as well, but this is something that I've never done. And if you come over here, you can kind of see if I can find my mouse, like all the different texture that I'm about to carve in to this uh, footboard. But uh, I'm not even gonna test carve it or air carve it or whatever. I'm just gonna go for it. I also like to live dangerously. I think I'm just starting to crack the surface of what my CNC is capable of. And I'm super excited to learn even more new techniques. And that's really the great thing about my job now. I'm learning new things every day and that feels really good. You are the ones who gave me that opportunity just by watching my goofy videos and having to tolerate my corny dad joke. So I just wanna say thank you for that and all of your support. And speaking of, the best way to support this channel is to hit that subscribe button, watch my new videos when they drop, and keep up the witty banter in the comments section. I love it, you guys are hilarious. Seriously, all of you are amazing, and I can't thank you enough. Because it's oak, there's quite a bit of little uh, chip out, so I'm gonna have to get some soft sanding pads and really kinda work this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Actually, the finish at the bottom is pretty good. The slab tapers about six inches from one end to another, so I decided to cut a straight edge along the bottom, which makes the slab about 38 inches tall across its entire length. And this is gonna allow me to use that straight edge along the bottom to reference all the hardware and the bow tie inlays that's gonna go into this headboard. 
That's so um, this piece doesn't get heavier and heavier and heavier and have all that leverage. When I get down here, it just rips that off and takes a big chunk. What I need to do now is just kind of lay out the position of everything, where it's gonna be on the headboard, find my center, measure out for the rails, where the nightstands are gonna go, where the bow ties are gonna go, where the inset lights. Center is 59. These lights I got, whoo, they are gorgeous and they were so expensive. I paid $800 for two of these. What? They're so nice that I, I couldn't not do it. So you'll reach up, push that, and then you can aim, see this little light right here? You can aim that down where you're reading. If you see that little detent pen right there, that strikes that little switch. So when you close it, boom, light goes off. Now my wife likes more simple builds. In her words, sometimes my designs are a little jazzy and I'm a little worried she's gonna hate these brass bow ties, but I'm gonna take that risk anyways. The slab actually needs bow ties considering the bigger cracks go almost entirely through the slab. And I think it adds a modern, simple, but sort of elegant style. And that's what I'm going for on this piece. Not that this is simple, but I don't think it's too jazzy. I don't know, what do y'all think? Do you like the brass bow ties or should I have used a more subtle red oak bow tie? Let me know down in the comments below. This little pick set that I'm using right here is super handy for tasks like cleaning up excess epoxy. I'll make sure I'll link these down below. These are actually pretty inexpensive. I find myself using them all the time for a bunch of different things. Moving on to making the drawers, and I decided to up the ante and try half-blind dovetail drawers. Using this Rockler dovetail jig, I've never done this before, but these drawers came out super nice. The dovetails weren't entirely necessary, but I really do think it adds like an extra touch to the overall fit and finish of this bed. Took me two days, but I have two drawers. Now I've got the, uh, the rabbit in there to accept the drawer bottom. For the drawer bottom, I'm using some uh, really, really high-end material. Like you can't even get this stuff unless you're on the black market, but I'm going to reclaim some Baltic birch quarter inch plywood. This is from my old workbench. It'll clean up nice. It'll look good. It looks like crap right now. This will be the most expensive part of the entire build right here. This reclaimed Baltic birch. So for a limited time, I'm selling a one foot by one foot plot of reclaimed Baltic birch plywood and calling my new company Unestablished Titles. And I make this pledge to you. With every order, one tree will be cut down. Established Titles is not a real company. This video isn't real. Nothing is real. This is how we glue it. This is how we glue it. This side I had some blowout. See right there, right there. That's technically the front, but that will become the back. Up next, I'm gonna be putting this hardware into the headboard. So this is the hardware that I mortised into the end of the rails earlier. And now I have to put the mating piece into the headboard. The rail will come in, it's kinda hard to hold, like this go into there and lock into the frame of the bed. Here I'm mortising in the female side of the hardware and I have to mortise these deeper to accept the male hardware. The male hardware on the rails has a protrusion that then mates with the female side on the headboard for a snug fit. And I'm not really sure if I'm explaining that good enough, but I feel like if I was to go any further, we'd have to have the whole birds and bees conversation. And this is a wholesome family channel. Just know that when it all comes together, something beautiful is born of it. Alrighty, moving on. I have to cut in a recess for these reading lights. So I made this little template here to help me place the lights evenly on either side of the bed. I do have to drill and cut into this beautiful giant slab to inlay those lights that I bought. And one wrong cut here and I've ruined this whole piece. But lucky for me, I never make mistakes. These are looking really good and match those bow ties nicely and I'll finish wiring them up when the bed is all done. Right here is that exciting time in the build where you can really start to see it all come together but you also realize there's like a thousand more tiny steps to complete before it's actually done. So here we're fitting the rails and getting those levels so we can cut the footboard to its final width. And my miter saw is just a little bit too small to cut all the way through. Bigger. That cut was a little uneven since I had to flip it over. So here I'm squaring off the end with my track saw. 
Getting back to those nightstands, I'm using some wooden dovetail slides to install the drawers, which these are pretty easy to install. I just use glue and then a little CA glue to hold the slides in place while that wood glue dries. On the drawer face, I'm gonna carry over that vector wave pattern from the footboard, and I'm carving that now over on Owen Wilson. Wow, 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 wow. I'm really into that vector texture technique. You know, it's something I just learned, and I really like the way it looks on this bed, and I have a feeling it's gonna pop up in a lot more of my projects coming up, so definitely stay tuned for that. My original design called for two tapered legs attached to the footboard, but you remember how I said I'd never make mistakes? These were the legs. I think I was rushing and I totally messed them up. I cut too steep of an angle, which means it went too far up the leg, which means this section where the headboard is gonna attach to is right at 13 inches long. My headboard is 14 and a half inches tall, so it would stick up an inch and a half over the leg. I glued up another block. I'm gonna make a couple more legs out of this. They will just be, you know, like a solid block all the way down to the ground. And then I'll put a heavy round over on the outside corner. We're getting really close to uh, getting this bed all done. The last 10% takes 90% of the time. Or at least it feels that way. So all I need to do is finish installing the bed hardware, round over the rails, sand the floating nightstands, and make the French cleats that will attach them to the headboard. The footboard needs to be assembled, which I'm doing with this Rockler dowling jig. I also need to add this long leg, I guess you would call it, to the center of the headboard, which will make the whole headboard appear to be floating. Then I can attach the slat support ledges to the rails, clean up the headboard, sand everything, and finally apply some Rubio Monocoat for the finish. So again, Katie has been asking for a king size bed for years now, literally since our first date, which was kind of weird now that I think about it. All this time I thought what I was bringing to the bedroom was adequate, but apparently not. Apparently, size matters. We got the bed over to the house and I've got a short window of time to get everything put together before Katie gets home and I can finally reveal her big new king size bed. Okay. Oh God. You said you wanted bigger. Here you go. <gasps> oh my gosh! <gasps> How did you do that? Uh, CNC. Oh my gosh. Oh. What's that? <gasps> Shut your mouth. Shut it's a reading light, so if you if you aim it, like <gasps> you'll be able to read. <laughs> that is really cool. You waited four years for a king size bed. <laughs> Was it worth the wait? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we got our own big bed now. Father. Okay. Father. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm tired. <laughs> okay, watch out. Coming in. Coming in hot. <sighs> Look in the camera and tell my audience what they should do. Like and subscribe. And what else? Leave a comment. And what else? Your mom. Exactly.